Our first guest, ladies and gentlemen, is a, a talented actor who stars in a brand new film entitled The Mummy. It opens tomorrow. Here's Brendan Fraser. Brendan, nice to see you again. Good you were here not you. so long ago with another movie. You just keep making movies left and right, don't you? Um, I'm like a shark. If yeah. I stop, I die. You know? <laughs> and in like big, big movies. And of course, here now you got, you got The Mummy. This is a, uh, a new version of a, of a classic old uh, horror story, right? It's been over 50 years since uh, Universal Films has released a mummy movie. And what we've done is given it a brand new look, a reinvention, really. The creature, um, who we all remember to uh, have been stumbling around in the dark, wrapped in bandages. One of these deals? Right, and you just want to yell to his victim, run faster! And sure. he always trips, yeah. and drops his pith helmet, and gets strangled. Yeah. But uh, what we've done is uh, recreated him using industrial light and magic and uh, Arnold Vosloo's performance to create a character who's fierce, who can shape change, who descends the 10 plagues on the earth, and he's looking for his lost love. So the premise is still the same. So that's what it is. It's a guy who was, who was buried alive. That's what happened? Yeah. yeah, he got in some trouble with the Pharaoh's mistress about 3,000 years ago. And then in 1921, when I um, stumble upon the lost ruins of a city, um, he's unwittingly awakened, mm -hmm. and uh, it's our job to put him back to sleep. But the key here, uh, unless I misread you, the key here is he was buried alive, you see? <laughs> He was buried alive and then, and then uh, uh, dozing, essentially, for, for decades, yeah. centuries. Minding his own business. And now, and who wouldn't be, he's pissed. <laughs> right? That's what Absolutely it is. Absolutely right. Yeah. But you're, you're, not, you're not the mummy. No, I'm not the mummy. I play Rick O'Connell. You, you chase the mummy. There. You're chasing the mummy. You're with your French Foreign Legion. Sure. I'm a French Foreign Legion, so I could be anyone capable of anything. Mm -hmm. um, I get promoted to colonel on the spot when we meet him because, uh, well, everyone else turns tail when 10,000 angry, charging Tuareg warriors um, are attacking us on the ruins of the lost city. Mm -hmm. um, it's a tall order to fill. Yeah, yeah, you got your work cut out for you there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and and uh, uh, where did you uh, film uh, the Mummy epic here? In uh, North Africa, on um, uh, in the Sahara Desert, where Lawrence of Arabia was shot. Oh man! So what, what is that like? It must be beautiful there. It's so, sort of a, a majestic and barren and uh, exquisite, a bit scary, a, bit a little surreal, bit. somewhat. Yeah, At the end of the day, so. sandstorms would kick up, and they would um, always cause us to have to stop and uh, stop work early. And sometimes the sand would just get everywhere. Actually, which reminds me. <laughs> but um, we would get. Where did you get that sand? Well, it's in my shaving kit. <laughs> yeah. How long were you actually in the desert? Three and a half months huh? um, with camels and uh, um, uh, stuntmen. And, uh, it which was, is worse, the camels or the stuntmen? When, I mean, you're going to be in the desert. Which would you rather have with you? A camel. The camels. Sure. I really would. would you rather have the camels? <laughs> and, uh, now, and when you do that, is there, you probably, there's a luxury hotel. It's like the, the, the Sahara <laughs> Marriott or something, it? right? This, it, it, we did have a, a hotel of a sort. It was uh, painted purple and pink with green clouds on the wow, inside cool. of it. It was really disturbing, yeah. to tell you the truth. D disturbing. <laughs> yeah, well, especially when the Czechoslovakian stuntmen would drink too much and stack up um, coffee tables and chairs and practice stunts on their days off mm -hmm. and videotape it so they could laugh at it at breakfast the next day. <laughs> yeah. But what, what is life like? I mean, are, are you ri is it primitive because you're so far from civilization? Or is it not that bad? Is it just, oh, yeah, they're shooting right behind the cabana over there on the other side of the pool? No. The lap pool, not that pool. You know, is it? No, Dave. We were really way out there. We were such, um, uh, probably so far away from civilization. At one point, um, my driver uh, turned to me when we were coming home. And he said, "Look over that mountain range." And I said, "Yeah." He says, "If you go over there, you won't come back." Yeah. That's Algiers. And later, we learned in uh, we got back to London that uh, the producers had taken our kidnapping insurance on all of us. Well, sure, absolutely. In the event of, yeah. you know. But really, how uncivilized can it be if you've got a driver? You know, you're in a limo for God's <laughs> yeah. sake. What are we talking about here? I know. But did you, uh, right. did you, did you have to ride camels and stuff? Well, they had to train us to, um, well, learn to you know, contend with them. Uh, camels have a bad rap for being temperamental and uh, argumentative and you know, bad breath, but um, I got on really well with mine. Uh, his name in Arabic started with a B, I couldn't pronounce it, so I named him Barney. Barney is good, yeah. Barney um, uh, developed a hemorrhoid problem when someone tied his saddle too tight, so he had to be replaced by a stunt camel, um, who uh, was tired all the time, and he didn't want to work, and he was the clumsiest camel, so we named him Marmaduke, and if there was a pebble in the middle of the desert, he would trip on that pebble, guaranteed, every time. The only time he would run fast is when they called lunch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and and I, I understand all the other problems with the camel, but why is his breath a problem? What really, what does that keep you from doing, exactly? <laughs> 
breathing. <laughs> what? Why? You can't communicate. How does that get in the way? Is it hot? Must be hotter than hell there in the desert. That's what I hear. Huh? We clocked in at 130 before <laughs> breakfast. Oh man, 130. Yeah, the cameras would jam and. Uh, yeah. And we, did you? Did it take a toll on you? Was it? I mean, punishingly hot? Was it withering? It was deceptively hot. Like, this sort of temperature was that you didn't really know how tired you really were. So the biggest challenge on this picture for me was just to not come off with you know my tongue hanging out of my mouth, mouth looking like some sort of wimp version of the hero. Because yeah, <laughs> yeah. so we have to run again and again and again through the sand with the bullets going off and everything. And the director's only uh, instruction to me was, uh, "Look cool and don't die. Action." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, and you, you were nearly injured on the uh, film. They uh, had a thing where you're supposed to be hung, and then uh, oh, you know, what happened there? Well, it's kind of hard to talk about, to tell you the truth, but I will. Um, in the beginning of the film, it's a convention to show how tough the hero is, so uh -huh. he has to survive his own death, and uh, I get thrown in jail. And uh, on that morning, it's, uh, my, my execution is scheduled. Um, and uh, I'm, the stuntman, of course, stepped in and uh, was pushed from a scaffold and, and fell, and it was quite disturbing. And then, uh, of course, they send in Actor Boy for mm -hmm. the close-ups. Sure. Uh, and so they <laughs> didn't afford me the luxury of wearing they, a they, harness. They put you in the, uh, the, the, the rope and everything? Just a rope around yeah. my neck, a plain old garden variety rope. And uh, they <laughs> tightened it up, and the director came over and said, I don't know, the tension didn't look like it was, you know, realistic, wasn't matching before. Can we just take it up a little bit more? And I Tighten said, it up a little. Yeah. yeah. And I said, I, I don't know, well, OK, just one take. And, and so the camera spun around, and it landed on my face. And all I remember is uh, this sort of volume kind of like sound going, ew. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then the next thing I know, my elbow is in my ear, and there's all these medics going, hello, Brendan, wake up. Yeah. Brendan, Brendan. And the stunt guy runs up to me and goes, hey, great, join the club. Mel Gibson did the same thing on Braveheart. And I'm like, I love it. And, so you're nearly yeah. dead. You're nearly actually hurt. Wow. Technically. I did die, but there was nothing. You were off. actually technically dead. Technically dead. My doctor told me for like 12 or 14 seconds, but wow. I guarantee you there was nothing auto or erotic about it. Yeah. <laughs> Captain, do you see how tough it is making movies? Linda <laughs> Fraser, Star of the Mummy. It opens tomorrow. Hey, good. Good to see you again. Thanks, nice to have you here, Pleasure Brendan Fraser, kids.